Hi guys, welcome to another drinking video with Thomas. Today I am enjoying a Bilbo cocktail. Oh yeah, and I'm also unboxing a keyboard. Right, cheers guys. Ah, now this keyboard arrived while I was on holiday. I didn't expect that would go well, but apparently it still reached me. It's unmarked, so I'm not 100% sure which one it is, but I do think I know. And I'm quite excited about it, so let's have a look. Cool. Let's get some scissors out. I usually like these silver uh, bubble wrap bags. They're pretty good, generally. What's up? Wow, this is very big ones wrapped all around. Them. I'll be able to reuse this if I don't utterly destroy it. Come. Motherfucker. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That went, that went just about well. Fucking hell. Mm. Okay, let's put this in a slightly safer position. Very nice. Jesus Christ. There you go. It is the one I was thinking of. It is the Drunk Deer. Well, it says M75, but off the top of my head, it was actually called an A75. But anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll see. Uh, this is uh, a magnetic switch keyboard, as you can see here, um, which is quite nice. Uh, it's an adjustable actuation one, even, which is one of the reasons why... I'm not sure whether they reached out to me. I think they reached out to me uh, rather than the opposite way around, but I quickly accepted because I love uh, magnetically adjustable, magnetically actuated keyboards, and especially ones with adjustable actuation. So, yeah. Drunk Deer, founded by keyboard enthusiasts, invites you to discover greater diversity of mechanical keyboard. Okay. We present a new concept, non-mechanical switch, with no physical contact, it breaks the limitations of traditional mechanical switches and offers a new level of comfort and performance. Okay, so there are a lot of things wrong, <laughs> wrong with this. First of all, they definitely did not invent this in any way. This is not a new concept at all. In fact, I think Hall Effect switches were one of the very, very first, if not the first, um, keyboard switches. And I'm not sure I'd call it non-mechanical either. It's also weird to advertise with it. Say, yeah, oh, our keyboards are not mechanical. But anyway, that's more of a semantics thing. I did a whole video about why the term mechanical keyboards is not great. So let's first see what that is like. God, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Suits for Mac and Windows. Okay, I think they um, may need to get some language proofing done here and there. Cool. Drunk Deer Quick Guide. Yeah, that's what the keyboard looks like. Thanks. Okay, just a shortcut uh, manual thing. Why is that? Quick reference. A user manual. Um, we'll have a look at that in a bit, maybe. Cable and a wire puller. It looks almost exactly the same as a wire puller I already have. Don't know if that's in easy reach 
right now. Ah, it doesn't matter, I've got hundreds of these, but it's always nice to have one included, of course. And a cable plus USB. Motherfucker. USB A to USB C adapter. And of course, a USB C and C cable. Cool, that seems to be getting more standard nowadays. And then, keyboard cover. Simple foam insert. Just gonna get rid of that for a second. Some extra keycaps. Fuck it. Jesus fucking Christ. Come on. There we go. Let's see what's on. It's probably uh, Windows and Mac ones, aren't they? <clears throat> yeah, it looks like the keyboard has the Mac ones on. Oh, ew, again. Ugh, yeah. Mac ones by default. Revolting. Right, there's nothing else in the box. Let's just get rid of that. And, uh, ooh, it's very light. There you go. The M75 or A75 or whichever one it is. Magnetic keyboard. Interesting keycaps. I'm not sure these are backlit. Oh, we'll see. Looks very simple. Feels very light. But of course, proof is in the pudding. So let's have a look. Just going to borrow the wooting cable I have lying here. So, that well, seems to work. Oh, interesting. I didn't looking at it it didn't it doesn't look like the keycaps would let light through but actually they do. Ah, interesting. So what is this like? <laughs> oh, that's actually interesting. As always, this is not going to be a review. This is just a first impressions. Interesting. Wonder if they lube these switches or not. Oh, they're definitely very smooth. I'm not entirely sure what switch this really is. If this is a proprietary one or a, some other one that they uh, used. Judging by <laughs> how they market it, I'm going to assume it's their own make. Well, definitely it definitely looks like it's a proprietary switch with one of those dustproof sliders. Hmm. Some sort of semi-transparent housing. Or at least a uh, top housing. Interesting. Actually, it looks pretty... <laughs> Dipstick. Actually, it looks pretty good. It gives in a little bit when I press it, but that's okay. That just means play flexibility. I really like that they put the legends in the top left. How often do you see legends in the top left of a mechanical keyboard nowadays, especially a backlit one? It's quite rare. Nice. My name is Thomas, and I'm typing on Drunk Deer right now. <laughs> Didn't think I'd ever type that. That's nice. Obviously, I'll have to do a lot more testing before I can say anything of use about this, but yeah, it definitely feels contactless. If you know what contactless switches feel like, there is a there is a certain feel they've got to them compared to contact based switches, and this one definitely has that. It's interesting. It's also pretty light, not super light, but kind of light, maybe a bit mid weighted. That's nice, and of course adjustable actuation. I'll have to see how to uh, do that on this particular keyboard. I'm gonna guess it comes with some 
sort of external software. Um, oh, no. Ooh. Ha. Wow, I'm glad I looked that up, actually. You can set it on the... Yeah, it's never going to focus, but you can set it on the keyboard itself. It's FN plus 1 to FN plus 9. Well, I'm going to test that out right now. So... Let's see, FN plus 1 is 0 0.4 millimeters of travel. I'm going to turn my sound off real quick. Uh, okay, so this is super sensitive. Yeah, it is. Yeah, ooh, I can pretty much breathe on it and it works. And it goes in 0 0.4 millimeter incre increments to 3.6. So it's essentially full travel and um, adjustable for except for the first and last 0 0.4 millimeters so fn9 now it should be yeah 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 now it's almost completely insensitive well i wouldn't say that but yeah you have to push it a lot further wow that's really cool i think this is the first time i've ever seen a keyboard where you can program the actuation distance on the fly that's really nice so usually I pick something like 2.4, I guess that'll be six, a little bit over half. If it's uh, too stiff, I might move it upward a little bit. Interesting. What else? About the magnetic switch. Magnetic switches utilize hole sensors to determine the distance a key is pressed by measuring the strength of magnetic field. Okay, I'm going to have to resist the temptation to be um, uh, annoying and correct them on that. But anyway, it makes it possible to customize the trigger point to your preferred level of pressure and distance, accommodating all typing styles. Interesting. MS doesn't rely on physical contact, which can wear down the key over time. These switches can be pressed hundreds of millions of times. Oh, that's an interesting claim. I wonder if they've actually done the testing for that. This is vastly superior to the metal context of conventional switches. Well, it definitely can be. I, I really agree with them there. Okay, backlight effect. Um, switch, switch layout. Control the volume by the knob sense yeah that works perfectly blah 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 it's a really simple manual this is actually quite nice please do not place the keyboard in a high temperature or strong magnetic environment blah 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 we do not recommend disassembling or modifying this keyboard due to the characteristic of magnetic switches abnormal environments such as severe impact high temperature and strong magnetic fields may cause the keyboard to malfunction well, it's a very simple manual but it does what it says um, so they don't mention any external software for this, which is nice. Um, cool. Well, I'm definitely going to have a mess around with that. I think, yeah, looking at the timer, I think I'm going to call it at this because I've been rambling on for far too long. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, you'll see this down at, at some point down the line. I've still got some keyboards to cover, but, uh, yeah, it looks, uh, looks like an interesting find. Right. Bye, guys.